Hello and welcome to Theta Sigma's Doctor Who podcast number 16. This is the fifth in our sometimes series looking at the Doctors and the actors who have played the role. This being May, the fifth month of the year, you can probably work out for yourselves which Doctor we'll be examining today. Welcome aboard. I'm the Doctor. Or will be if this regeneration works out. Peter Davison was born Peter M. G. Moffat on the 13th of April 1951 and is best known for his roles as Tristan Farnan in the television show All Creatures Great and Small and as the fifth incarnation of the Doctor, which he played from 1981 to 1984. Davison was born in Streatham in London, the son of an electrical engineer who was originally from Guyana. The family then moved to Knapp Hill in Surrey, and during this time Davison was a member of an amateur theatre company called the Byfleet Players. Before becoming an actor, he gained three O-levels at Winston Churchill School in Woking in Surrey, and then had several odd jobs, including a stint as a mortuary attendant and a Hoffman Press operator. Davison studied at the Central School of Speech and Drama. His first job was as an actor and assistant stage manager at the Nottingham Playhouse. He took the stage name Peter Davison to avoid confusion with the actor and director Peter Moffat, with whom Davison later worked. His first television work was in 1975, an episode of the children's science fiction program called The Tomorrow People, alongside American actress Sandra Dickinson, whom he married in 1978. Davison portrayed an alien named Elmer, often tortured with tickling boots, under the control of his sister and his mother, also known as the Mama. In the mid-1970s, during a lull in his acting career, Davison spent 18 months working in a tax office in Twickenham. In 1976, he was offered a permanent role in the 13-part TV miniseries Love for Lydia, opposite young Jeremy Irons. The series was broadcast on ITV the following year. In 1978, Davison's performance as the youthfully mischievous Tristan Farnan in All Creatures Great and Small made him a household name. Davison himself has said that he was mainly cast in that role because he looked as if he could be Robert Hardy's younger brother. Davison and his wife composed and performed the theme tunes to Button Moon, a children's TV programme broadcast in the 1980s, and also Mixed Blessings, a sitcom broadcast on ITV in 1978. He subsequently appeared alongside Dickinson as the dish of the day in the television version of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy in 1981, whose producers considered it humorous for an actor known for playing a veterinary surgeon to appear as a cow. The couple had a daughter, Georgia Moffat, in 1984 but sadly they divorced in 1994. Davison has also appeared in several British sitcoms, including Holding the Fort and Sink or Swim, as well as appearing in other dramatic roles. In 1981, Davison signed a contract to play the Doctor for three years, succeeding Tom Baker, and, at age 29, was at the time the youngest actor to have played the lead role, a record he retained for nearly 30 years, until Matt Smith took the role in 2009 at the age of 26. Attracting such a high-profile actor as Davison was as much of a coup for the programme's producers as getting the role was for Davison. But he didn't renew his contract because he feared being typecast. Second Doctor actor Patrick Troughton had recommended to Davison that he leave the role after three years, and Davison followed this advice. The Fifth Doctor encountered many of the Doctor's best-known adversaries, including Daleks and Cybermen. In 1982, Davison lent his name to two series of short stories published by Arrow. The two were Peter Davison's book of alien monsters and Peter Davison's book of aliens, which both featured a photograph of him on the cover. Davison did in fact return to play the Fifth Doctor in 1993 in the multi-Doctor charity special Dimensions in Time and in the 1997 video game Destiny of the Doctors. And he continues to reprise the role in a series of audio plays by Big Finish. He returned once again to play the Doctor on screen in Time Crash, a special episode written by Stephen Moffat for Children in Need. In the episode, the Fifth Doctor met the Tenth Doctor, played by Davison's future son-in-law, David Tennant. In 2012, Davison expressed further interest in returning to the role of the Doctor for the series' 50th anniversary. However, as we all now know, that won't be happening. After Davison left the Doctor in 1984, He didn't work on another popular series until 1986, when he played Dr. Stephen Dacre in a very peculiar practice. Davison also played the leading campion, a series based on the period whodunits of Marjorie Allingham. 
This and the opportunity to play Tristan Farnan again in 1985 and 1990 kept Davison busy until the early 1990s, when he gradually faded then from the public eye. He continued to appear occasionally on television, including playing the leads in Fiddler's 3 and Harnessing Peacocks, and an appearance on the American show Magnum P.I. In 1994 and 95, he co-starred in the British sitcom Ain't Misbehaving. Then in 1995, he presented Heavenly Bodies, a six-part series about astronomy broadcast on BBC One. With a variety of roles in between time, it wasn't until 2000 that Davison returned in another major role, that of David Braithwaite in At Home with the Braithwaites. A man is the sum of his memories, you know, a time lord even more so. But what of the Fifth Doctor himself? The Fifth Doctor era was notable for a back-to-basics attitude, in which silly humour, and to an extent horror, was kept to a minimum, and more scientific accuracy was encouraged by the producer John Nathan Turner. It was at times a darker and grittier series, in part for seeing the death of one of his companions, Adric. It was also notable for the reintroduction of many of the Time Lord's enemies, such as the Master, the Cybermen, Omega, the Black and White Guardians, and the Silurians. The Fourth Doctor's regeneration into the Fifth was problematic, and nearly failed, with the Doctor briefly taking on personality aspects from his four previous incarnations. After recovering in Castrovalva, he continued his travels with Tegan Javanka, Nyssa and Adric. Initially, his travels centred on getting Tegan back to Heathrow Airport in time for her first day as an air hostess, but the TARDIS repeatedly missed the destination, and Tegan eventually decided to stay in the TARDIS. After trips to the future and the past, encountering villains such as the Monarch and the Mara, the Fifth Doctor was confronted with tragedy when Adric died trying to stop a space freighter from crashing into prehistoric Earth. Following Adric's death, the TARDIS accidentally arrives at Heathrow Airport. Here the Doctor and Nyssa left Tegan, assuming that she would want to stay there, when in reality she wanted to stay on board the TARDIS. The Doctor and Nyssa then travelled together for an unspecified amount of time, before renegade Time Lord Omega, attempting to return to our universe, temporarily bonded himself to the Doctor. Faced with this threat, the Time Lords were forced to attempt executing the Doctor, but he eventually tracked Omega to Amsterdam, where he defeated him and re-encountered Tegan, who had no second thoughts about rejoining the TARDIS crew. When the Doctor met new companion by the name of Vizsla Turlo, he didn't know that Turlo had been commissioned by the Black Guardian to kill him. Soon after, Nyssa left to help cure Lazar's disease on the space station Terminus. After meeting the entities known as the Eternals, racing in yacht-like spacecraft for the prize of enlightenment, Turlo broke free from the Black Guardian's influence and continued to travel with the Doctor and Tegan. Landing in the reign of King John, the crew again encountered the Master, who was using the shape-shifting robot Chameleon to impersonate the King. However, the Doctor helps Chameleon to regain his free will, and the robot joined him in his travels. The Doctor met three of his previous incarnations when they were summoned to the Death Zone on Gallifrey by President Barusa, who was attempting to gain Rassilon's secret of immortality. And it's here that I want to pause our look at the Davison Doctor and take a brief look at Richard Herndl, who played the first Doctor in this 20th anniversary special, The Five Doctors. Goodness me, so there are five of me now! <laughs> Richard Herndl was born in Darlington and attended Claremont Preparatory School Darlington and then Scarborough College before training as an actor at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts. He then appeared in several plays at Stratford-upon-Avon and also acted with the BBC Radio Drama Repertory Company from 1949 to 1952. In 1983, to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Doctor Who, producer John Nathan Turner planned a special event, The Five Doctors, a 90-minute episode to feature four of the five actors who had at that point played the role of the Doctor. William Hartnell, the actor who originated the role, had died in 1975. The show's unofficial fan consultant, Ian Levine, had seen Richard Herndl in Blake 7, another BBC science fiction series, and suggested him to the producers as a possible replacement. Herndl eventually won the role of the first Doctor, playing him as acerbic and temperamental, but in some ways wiser than his successors, even though, as the first incarnation, he was also the youngest Doctor chronologically. When Tom Baker, who played the fourth Doctor, decided not to appear in the programme, Herndl's role was beefed up slightly to have the first Doctor take a greater part in the action. For me, Herndl played an excellent first Doctor, 
And back in those days, of course, there was never quite the controversy and fan discussion about replacing an actor like that that there is these days. That's the trouble with regeneration. You never quite know what you're going to get. After further adventures in which the Doctor re-encountered old foes, including the Silurians and the Sea Devils, both Tegan and Turlo left the TARDIS. Tegan came to find the death and violence they encountered on their travels too much, and Turlo returned to his home planet of Trion in the company of his younger brother, as well as other exiles of Trion from the planet San. The Doctor was eventually forced to destroy Chameleon when the Master used his mental connection to the robot to regain control of him, a process which Chameleon realised was irreversible. Ultimately, the Fifth Doctor and his last companion, Perpigillium Perry Brown, were exposed to the drug Spectrox in its deadly toxic raw form on Androzani Minor. With only one dose of the antidote available, he nobly sacrificed his own existence to save Perry expressing doubt for the first time that regeneration might be possible, before actually regenerating into the Sixth Doctor. The Fifth Doctor was a far more vulnerable, sensitive and reserved character than his previous incarnations, and often reacted to situations rather than initiating them. Frequently he made decisions by flipping a coin. Unlike his more authoritative predecessors, he treated his young companions as part of a team, and often willingly participated in situations under the leadership of someone else who had the strong command presence that he apparently lacked. However, the Fifth Doctor's boyish appearance, nervous energy and charm all hid the fact that he was a Time Lord of great age, compassion and experience. He could decipher the ingredients of a drink by smell alone, and Rosemary made him sneeze. As always, if you have any feedback, please feel free to share it on this post, or you can email me at respectthething at gmail.com. That's all one word and all lowercase, respectthething at gmail.com. So until next time... Well, goodbye, my boy. You did quite well. Quite well. Hmm. It's reassuring to know that my future is in safe hands. Thank you for listening to Theta Sigma's Doctor Who podcast. Doctor Who and its associated shows are all copyright and property of the BBC, and no infringement is intended. 